Greeting Saints, my name is Mark Brainy with Out of the Cities Ministry. I am very happy to be here today to um, talk to you a little bit about this topic that is very, very important in the time that, that we're living in. Saints, um, this topic, we started talking about it last time and I was impressed to do a part two of this. This is uh, the title is, Will this will the SDA Church Make It? Part 2. Will the SDA Church Make It? Saints, we, we realize that we need to uh, talk about this and the, the Lord has impressed us to, to go a little bit further on this topic. Before we do so, let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for bringing us here together to study your word. Please, may your Holy Spirit come and make, thing, make, make it plain to us. May we see, may we understand, Father. Please, make it plain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, when we look around as, when we see what's happening, especially among God's people, we can say, definitely we can say that, the shaking has officially started. Especially when we look around, when we look uh, uh, um, within the uh, present truth circle, uh, we see there's a lot of divisions. And that is um, a clear indication that the, the shaking has already started. Saints, we, we, we were told that these things would, would happen among us, the things that we see happening. Whether it's our leadership um, doing things or, uh, that, 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 that is not biblical, or whether it's, it's, it's the members, uh, us engaging in, in things that are, that are not uh, biblical, we see things happening that we were told that these things would happen. And, um, but a lot of us are, are are being shaken in mind while we're thinking now, you know, if this is happening in this church, then this church must not be the true church. Then, then there must be a coming, a coming out of this church. So we're going to talk about this a little bit today. Before we do so, I have something here I want to read. Uh, it is found in um, uh, testimon Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5 page 707 it says God will arouse his people if other means fail heresies will come in among them which will sift them separating the shaft from the wheat saints we are told that if other means fail God would allow heresy to come among us and that will be the, the the means by which the shaking will, will be taking place saints that's what we see going on among us we see things that's that's been taken we see a lot of things that are that are being done among us that's not biblical that we there's a lot going on but then does this mean then God has left, has left that, this church. Does this mean that we now, you and I need to go and start another denomination? Or it, it, I've, had people t I've had people come to me and they said that uh, God is, uh, is no longer working through the organized body. He is now working through the independent churches because he has long rejected the leadership. Saints, we're going to look at this. We're going to talk about this a little bit and we'll see exactly what the Word of God says because we have to take this serious. This is very serious because I, I, I can see that God's people are being shaken out. And saints, we must be, we must be so careful 
that we know truth for us. We need to know truth for ourselves. When somebody presents something to us, even though it may sound good, we must test everything that is presented to us. Somebody come to you and tell you that, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 the general conference is no longer the voice of God or, or uh, they come to you and say stuff like God has long rejected the general conference because they rejected the uh, 1888 message. Saints, we need to test everything through the word and through the spirit of prophecy. When we read and when we read in Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse uh, 30, I'm not going to read uh, the whole thing, but we know that the Bible says in this particular verse to let them grow together until the harvest. Speaking of the wheat and the tares. So God, God in his word told us that the wheat and the tares will be growing together until the harvest. And then later on, it says that the harvest is the end of the world. So saints, that tells us until the end of the uh, until the end of the world there will be good and bad in the church you see because satan has all he also has uh, uh, placed his agent in the church so it is very important for you and i to know even though we see things going on that's not of god's order it's a sign it's a sign that the shaking has started and also we must let them go together we must let them go together we're going to read some things here and and uh we know that the church is in a laodicean state that's what that's what that's what jesus told us that this church is in a laodicean state it is wretched it is miserable it is poor it is blind and naked does that mean then god has left the church no he counseled the church to buy from him the necessary things uh, that we that this church uh, is in need of in order to to fully represent christ so saints you and i cannot be so so in mind thinking that god has left this church let me read you something from um, councils for the for the church page 240 councils for the church um, page 240 it says although there are evil existing in the church and will be until the end of the world the church in the last days is to be the light of the world that is polluted and demoralized by sin the church enfeebled and defective needed to be reproved warned and counseled is the only object upon earth upon which christ bestows his supreme regard saint the church it says the church is enfeebled is defective the church is in need of reproof it is in need of reproof the church needs to be warned the church needs to be counseled, but still, it is God's church. Saints, now we do know one thing. We do know once the Sunday law passes, uh, the, the, the structure that we, do, we currently have, it can't be. We, we won't have it because, of course, we can't buy, you can't buy or sell uh, uh, unless you have the mark of the beast. So we do know one, once uh, the Sunday law passes, then it's going to be a different story. But as we speak now, God has a people. God has an organized body that he is working through. So saints, this is exactly what this is telling us. That there are evil currently in the church. There are evil existing in the church. There are evil. There are a lot of things actually going on in God's church. That, that, that's, and it is not God's will. So, and we see it's, it, it says that these things would exist in the church. So you see, Jesus told us clearly that the good and the bad would be in the church all the way until the end. So then why then you and I will feel like if we see things going on in the church, 
then we, we feel like we must leave and go start another uh, uh, um, organization. Why do we feel that way? That's another trick of the devil to get us to be shaken out. Oh, saints, I plead with you, let's read the word. You see, the problem that I'm seeing is that as God's people, we are not reading for ourselves. We're letting others read for us. And they tell us, this is what it is, this is what it is, and we just go with it. Oh, saints, we cannot do that. Saints, we cannot do that. Let me read, let me read you something else from um, uh, three selected messages, uh, page 17, 18, and 19. So we'll read from uh, second, well, selected messages, volume three, pages 17, 18, and 19. And this was written in 1893. It says, I tell you, my brethren, that the Lord has an organized body through whom it will work. There are many, not, excuse me, it says, there may be more than a score of Judases among them, but the great teacher seeks to give lessons of instruction to correct, to correct these existing evils. He is doing the same today with his church. He is printing out their dangers. He is presenting them before them the Laodicean message. This is what God is doing. God recognized that the church is in a bad condition. He recognized there are wheat and tares in the church. But what he's presenting to them is the Laodicean message. Oh, saints, please, again, I beg you, we need to read these things more for ourselves and to realize that God is not calling us to go start another denomination. This is the last church. This is the Laodicean church. Saints, this is it. We cannot think that we're going to go and start another de denomination. It continues. It says, when anyone is drawn apart from the organized body of God's commandment keeping people, when he began to weigh the church and his human scales and begin to pronounce judgment against them, then you may know that God is not leading him. He is on the wrong track. Oh, saints. And do we have so, we have so many dear people falling for this trap. A lot of people saying, well, God is no longer working through the organized body. You want, we, that we now need to go ahead and, and, and start our own um, denominations or, or, or God now is now working through the independent churches. Oh, saints. God has always had a people and there's always apostasy among God's people. But what does, see God has a, he has a pattern. Every time there's apostasy in the church, what does he do? He would raise somebody from within the church to do a, a work of revival and reformation from within the church. When, when Israel, was in complete apostasy in the time of Elijah. God didn't choose a different nation. He didn't say, well, you, you have completely uh, gone into apostasy. I'm going to go ahead and get me another nation. He could have done that, but he didn't do that. He raised up some faithful ones and then to tell his people their sin, to tell his people that they're not doing, they're not walking according to his will. This is what God has always done. So now we have people trying to tear down the church and to say, well, you know, this is not right. What's going on in the church? Let's go ahead and break it off and do something else. Saints, that's not what God wants us to do. It continues. We are not to hurl the thunderbolt against the church of Christ militant. For Satan is doing all he possibly can in this line. And you who claim to be the remnant of the people of God had better not be found helping him, denouncing, accusing, and condemning, seeking to seek to restore, not to tear down, discourage, and destroy all saints. 
when I look around, that's all I see going on among, especially so-called present truth. I see a lot of people, they do nothing and they, they, we, are, they we are all part of the remnant church. And they do nothing but denouncing, accusing, and condemning. It says, you had better not be found helping Satan. See, you might think that you're doing the work of God while in actuality you, you, you're helping the enemy. Oh, saints, we don't want that. It says we are not to hurl the thunderbolt against the church of Christ. The church is in a militant state. You and I cannot sit there and keep criticizing the church. That's not helping, saints. We are not here to, to, to tear down. To, to discourage people, to destroy. I see there are some dear people that no longer go, they no longer go to church because they see what's going on and, and, and they, they hear what's going on in the church and then people are discouraged, saying, no, you can't go. You can't go sit among these sinners, you know, and, and, and give your, your, your money or support them financially. You can't do that. And then now you have some, some, some of our saints, they stay home. They 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 can't go to these churches because they feel like if they go there they are they will be among sinners. Oh saints, is re is that really what God wants us to do, saints? This work will not be finished if we continue that path. Jesus, remember Jesus would have come a long time ago, but his people just could not come together, and that is why we're still in this world. And it's the same thing. We are this close to the end, saints. Let's come together and let's finish this work. Let's finish this work. Now, there are people that, uh, that, that's, that, talks, that says that, uh, I have a lot of people that say that um, there will be a remnant that will come out of the remnant. Now, let's talk about this for a moment. A remnant that will come out of the remnant. Let's go ahead and read Romans chapter 9, verse 27. Romans chapter 9 and we're gonna go ahead and read verse uh, 27 and we will see the concept of a remnant out of a of the remnant Romans chapter 9 verse 27 it says <clears throat> Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea a remnant shall be saved. Saints, we have so many dear saints, dear friends. They use this verse and they say, you see, the remnant church, there will be a remnant that will come out of the remnant. Meaning the remnant church as we know it has totally apostatized, apostatized and God will have a people that will come out of that people and do their own thing. See, this is not what this is teaching and we will see that. The concept of the remnant, of the uh, out of the remnant, this is what it means. God has a church, a remnant church to whom he has given the truth for this time. Just like God has chosen Israel of old, he has chosen Seventh-day Adventists and he has given us a special message for this time. Now, even though we are, we may be so, it may be so that a lot of us have accepted this message, but only a remnant will stay true to that message. It, it does not mean a remnant will come from the remnant and go start their own church. That's not what it, it, it's, te it's telling us here. What it's saying is, only a remnant will stay true. When the Son of Law passes, the majority will give up and keep Sunday. That's, that's, all, that's what it comes down to, saints. Only a few will stay true to the message. Let me read you something. Uh, Selected Messages, Volume 3, page 179. You will take passages in the testimonies that speak of the close of probation and of, of the shaking coming among God's people, and you will talk of a coming out from this people of a pure, a holier, 
people that will arise. Now all this pleases the enemy. Should many accept this, the view you advanced and talk and act upon them, we would see one of the greatest fanatical excitements that has ever been witnessed among Seventh-day Adventists. This is what Satan wants. Saints, we, if you're talking about a people coming out of the remnant church, a people that is holy, hmm, a people that is pure, and they're going to come out of this church, it says you are doing the work of Satan. And this is exactly what Satan wants. Oh, saints, it says this pleases the enemy. If people were to follow you, there would be the greatest excitement among Seventh-day Adventists, a fanatical excitement. And that's what we see going on. We see a lot of people see that the church is sleeping. They're not, the church is not preaching what they need to be preaching for the, for the most part. And then they, they, they find somebody that tells them, hey, you know, you come to us. We'll, tell, we'll give you truth. And then they turn them completely against the church. This is the fanatical excitement that the, 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 the servant of the Lord is telling us here. We need to be very careful, saints, that we do not let ourselves be led away by Satan. We might think that we're doing the work of God, where in reality, we are actually doing the work of the enemy. Oh, saints, this is very, this is very sad when I think about it. This is very sad because I see people that God can use for this work to help finish the work. But they have, a bun they have totally left the organized body and they say that God has left it and they need to finish the work on their own. Now, there are others who says that God has completely left the church and he is now working through the independent churches, saints. Let's look at Paul. Remember, before he was Paul, his name was Saul. And on the road of Damascus, he found Jesus and Jesus is the truth. So he found truth. And what did Jesus do? When he asked Jesus, what, what will you have me to do? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, Jesus connect, connected him to his church. Jesus could have easily told Saul what I need you to do, but Jesus didn't do that. He connected him to his church and then his church told him what he needed to do. God has always has, he, he has always had a church, a, a people through whom he works. You see, this is the same thing that's going on. God has a people right now on earth and he's using this, th th that people to help others know more about him, to help others know, to help others know about the message for this time. So saints, if we say that we're going to finish the work, but we are divided, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's the same problem that the disciples that they had. They were not united. So the Holy Spirit could not come. And, and we need the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the form of the latter rain. See, they had the former rain and we need the latter rain. And the latter rain will never come, saints, as long as you and I, we are divided. Let me read you from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9 page 257 to 58 and this was written in 1909 so this is toward the end of sister white's life okay 1909 some have advanced the thought that as we near the close of time every child child of god will act independently of any religious organization but i have been instructed by the lord that in this work there is no such thing as every man's being independent saints if you are part of a of a a church or uh, that's the, the uh, uh, independent church that's working independently god is telling us the work is not going to be finished by by using anybody's independently we need to come together 
some people they actually think that that's that's what it says it says that some people will think that they can act independently of any religious organization they they feel like no see the the seven day adventist organization has been rejected totally by god so we need to work independently from them this is telling us now this is now how the work is going to fit to be finished it says in in order that the lord's work may advance healthfully and solidly his people must draw together saints we must come together to finish this work we must we must come together saints it says uh from uh, selected messages uh um volume 2 page 406 and this is uh from ellen's white final message to the seventh day adventist church and the general conference session in 1913 it says i am encouraged and blessed that as i realize as i realize that god of the god of israel is still guiding his people and that he will continue to be with them even to the end saints this is her last message that she gave before she died saints we need to know that god is still with this church we need to know that god is still with this church god has raised up this church and we when we read the book of revelation chapter 10 we saw the prediction of this movement are there things going on among us that god does not approve of yes of course it's always been the case has God totally left this church? No, absolutely not. Saints, we need to come to the place where we must come together. We need to come to the place where we, if we were teaching something and we realize it's error, that we must be humble enough to say that I was wrong. You see, this is where the problem is. We, we, we're not asking God to, to make us humble enough so when we realize our errors, that we might say, yes, I was wrong. But you know, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, all of this is possible. We, if we continue the path that we're going, Satan is winning. If we continue to divide, if we continue to talk bad about the church, to tear down the church, uh, trying to draw disciples uh, uh, after our, our own selves, we cannot finish the work this way. But you see, whether or not we're ready, God has a people that will be ready. It is my prayer that we all come together, saints. We need to stop fighting uh, among ourselves. We need to come together and fight against the devil. But what the devil got us doing, he got us fighting among each other. And then he's standing on the side laughing. We can't, we can't let this happen, saints. As Seventh-day Adventists, God has called us to bring a special, a special, very special message to this dying world. And the message is not being preached because we are fighting against one another. That's not God's will, saints. That is not, God, that, that is not God's will and that's not going to finish the word. Yes, there are things going on in the church and we need to raise, we need to talk about them, we need to take it to, the, to our leaders and we need to talk to them with our Bible and our spiritual prophecy in hand and present to them and tell them this is wrong. But it is, we don't need to take everything that's going on among us, we don't need to take it on the web where everybody else can see it. And then how then we need people to come in the church when we do that. Saints, we need to come together and we need to realize that God is not going to finish this work by using a, this independent church here, that independent church over there, and they don't see eye to eye. This is not how God is going to finish this work, saints. He's going to have a people that's united on the truth. Remember Jesus his, his, in his prayer in, in John chapter 17, his prayer was that we, you and I, we be one, just like he and the Father are one. 
That was his prayer. And that's the hope that we have, that we can be one. But we cannot be one as long as we are fighting. We are fighting. We are saying that the church, uh, God has totally rejected the church. We are not going to support the church with our with, with our uh, 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 tithe and our offering. We're not going to do that because they misusing it. Saints, if we have unfaithful leaders, God will deal with the unfaithful leaders. But let you and I, let us not say that we will not support because of unfaithful leaders. And remember Jesus said, Jesus said a time will come where they will beat you. They will kick you out of the synagogue. And we know we don't have, well, the synagogue is a, is, a, is a symbol of the church, right? So if you say, well, things are going on in the church, I'm going to leave. So you are not. So then what, what, what just happened is you disqualify yourself for what Jesus said that would happen to his people. Because he says that they will, get, they will kick us out of the synagogue. But if you already get yourself out of it, you see, then you disqualify yourself. Saints, like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we don't know how this church is going to look when, when the Sunday law passes. Uh, but we, we know it's not about organization. We know it's not about uh, the structure. That's not what's going to save us. But God has uh, 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 given us the blueprint, the structure, the way it is, it is right now so that it can make, it can facilitate the work. It can facilitate uh, everyone that, that, that's willing to work. That way we can finish this thing, saints. We cannot jump off the ship. It is too late now. When we look at what's happening politically, we see church and state coming together. This Sunday law is about to, like at any moment, saints, we can have a Sunday law. This is, too, it is way too late for you and I to be fighting among each other, saints. My appeal is that you and I, we come together. Let's study together. If there's something that is not very clear, let's come together and let's study it. Um, and when we read the spirit of prophecy, we should use the same method that we use for the Bible. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Because sometimes you can take one quotation here out of, it, out of its context and you can make it say what it does not say. So saint, let's not do that, saints. Let's, let's, let's be more prayerful about this. This church that we are part of is the remnant, is the remnant church of, of Bible prophecy. Will everybody in the remnant church be saved? Nope. God has, um, in fact, we were told that most of the most true Christians are in the Catholic church, the Baptist church. They, they are not currently not part of the remnant church, but they will at the time of the loud cry come in. So saints, you and I, we need to be part of this. We need to come together to study the word of God together and to see what the word says on this subject. It is not, not God's will that his church be divided into independent churches. It is not God's will. Saints, let's come together. It is my prayer that you would prayerfully consider reading about this, 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 this topic because we cannot break up God's church. Again, it's, 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 it's a pleasure for me to come and, and, and spend this time and talk to you. I pray that uh, you will let the Lord lead you and we know the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Again, it was Brother Mark with you from Out of the Cities Ministry. Until next time, bye-bye.